Hello and welcome to The Hungry Heracross. Legends Arceus was a game changer for the Pokemon series, introducing a variety of new and exciting gameplay features. Yeah, there's the obvious open world style and new battle mechanics, but there's a lot more than that. Some new features are pretty obvious, whilst others may have gone unnoticed. And in today's video, I'm gonna share the five best features introduced in Legends Arceus. With each entry, I'll be sharing what makes them so good and explaining why they should be included in future Pokemon games. But before we jump into the list, if you're new here, I post regular videos where I rank, analyze, and create all things Zelda and Pokemon. So if you're a fan of either series, hit subscribe so you don't miss any future content. With that out the way, we've got five topics to discuss, so let's jump to it. Kicking things off, we have a very subtle change that'll hopefully have a very pivotal impact in the series moving forward, and that's the improvements to status conditions. We've all had that horrible experience. The opposing Pokemon dodges all of your attacks, but they somehow land a hypnosis, and you're asleep doing nothing for the next three turns. Or even worse, they've hit your Pokemon with an Ice Beam that's left you frozen and inactive whilst they just chip away at your health. Thankfully in Legends Arceus, these status conditions have had a complete redesign that make them far more balanced and enjoyable. The sleep condition has been replaced with the drowsy status. This new effect functions similar to paralysis, whereby a drowsy Pokemon has a small chance of not attacking each turn. Whilst there is the chance that you might be too drowsy to attack consecutive times, it's not as likely as the current 2-3 turns of being asleep and useless. If a Pokemon is drowsy, it also takes more damage from attacks, and I think both of these changes make the sleeping effect much fairer and enjoyable. The frozen status has also been replaced with Frostbite. This new effect is comparable to the burn condition, whereby you lose 1 16th of your health at the end of each turn. A Pokemon affected by Frostbite also has their special attack halved, similar to how burn halves physical attack. Losing a bit of HP and situational damage output is so much better than the completely random frozen effect. What I also like about these two conditions is that they only last for 5 turns and can be removed with certain attacks. It means that there are ways to adequately prepare for battles that may involve status conditions if you choose to do so. As we head into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I really hope that the adjustments to status conditions remain. It was a far more enjoyable experience battling without the warrior being unable to attack turn after turn, so I would hate to see the new games veer away from that. These changes would also help reduce the luck element from competitive games, be it the official competition, ranked singles, or just having fun with your friends. Sure, it's fun to cheese opposing Pokemon with the old effects, but it's not worth being on the receiving end of a horrific 7 turn freeze. One of the best things about the Pokemon series is that there's a variety of ways in which you can play the game. You can progress through and finish once you've beaten the main story. You can build a competitive team and battle your friends and strangers all across the world. And you can try and catch every Pokemon in the region. Filling your Pokedex is a tough challenge, especially with version exclusives that can be hard to obtain. But up until Legends Arceus, filling your decks simply meant catching one of each Pokemon. The new title introduced depth to this gameplay element by having tasks associated with each entry. Whether it's catching a creature multiple times, seeing it use a certain amount of moves, or observing it in a unique event, each Pokemon had some fun quests associated with it that you needed to complete to achieve a perfect Pokedex. I'm sure not everyone went around obtaining full marks on their decks, but the fact that it's an option is fantastic. It adds additional hours of gameplay by providing a fresh take on THE original aim of the franchise. Moving forward, I think any main series title needs to continue with this involved Pokedex. Even if catching multiples of the same Pokemon isn't pushed in the new game, there are still many tasks that can be allocated for each entry, such as walking a certain amount of steps, feeding at a quantity of food, or something involving whatever the new central mechanic will be. It could also link to the next entry on this list. Side quests have been around since the beginning, 
but they've rarely been anything memorable. By nature of the main series, there are so many optional ways to play the game that side content isn't a necessity. But whilst playing through Legends Arceus, I realized how beneficial requests can be in improving the Pokemon experience. Having these optional quests build the world of the game and are a natural way of adding lore and easter eggs. They also give life and personalities to NPCs that you'd otherwise not care about. Even something as small as giving Bogart a Wurmple makes this villager a more memorable character, whilst also allowing that evolutionary line to have something to be remembered by in the game. Whilst I don't think Legends nailed the request perfectly, I do think they're an awesome initiative that I'd love to see moving forward. I quite liked how across each area there were characters that had something for you to do, most of which were enjoyable. In previous games, these NPCs would have one line of dialogue and you'd completely forget about them. Whereas in Legends, I found myself referring to most of the random people by name. I really hope Scarlet and Violet take this concept and improve on it to make the Gen 9 region feel more realistic and livable. Hopefully they can also add some exciting new fetch quests, minigame and challenges in lieu of the tasks that would just show me your completed Pokedex. The Pokemon franchise was created with trading in mind through both the aptly named trading cards and the main series titles. In the Kanto region alone, there are four Pokemon that can only evolve via trade. So if any veteran trainers wanted to complete their Pokedex back in the day, they would need to find a friend who also had the game or have some rich parents to buy a second system and cartridge. 25 years later and trading is still embedded into the franchise, but not everyone has friends or family members who play the game, so trading can kind of suck. Thankfully, Legends Arceus introduces a brand new item that solves all trade related problems in the linking cord. This item acts similar to an evolution stone but for Pokemon who would normally evolve via trade. So rather than trying to find someone to exchange Haunters with, you can just use the core to evolve yours into a Gengar. No trying to find a trade partner, no trying your luck over an online trading system, no hassles. Unless of course you want to. See, similar to Pokemon Go, Legends Arceus still allows you to trade Pokemon to evolve them, but doesn't make it a requirement. Given that obtaining four linking cords is quite a hassle though, it's fair to say the game still encourages you to trade, which is fine. I feel that this item is extremely inclusive and allows anyone, anywhere in the world who has the game to complete the Pokedex. Yes, technically you can catch all the final stages of these evolutions anyway, but putting that aside, this item is a welcome change that needs to be present in every title moving forward. I think it would be a huge step backwards for Gang Freak if they decided to have these awesome Pokemon locked behind trading in Scarlet and Violet. That said, we did have something similar in Mystery Dungeon, so hopefully the linking cord doesn't remain another sprint off only item. The last new feature I'll discuss is the revamp to how Pokemon learn and remember moves. Just like every other main series title, each Pokemon can only know a maximum of four moves at any one time. However, in previous games, when a Pokemon reached a certain level, they'd instantly learn a new one, and you'd have to either delete a current one or stop the Pokemon from learning the new attack. It forces you to make a decision on the spot, which can be stressful. And if you're indecisive as me, it'll be time consuming. In Legends Arceus, move acquisition works a little differently. When a Pokemon levels up, it now gets the idea for a new move rather than instantly learning it. This new move goes into a pool of attacks that the Pokemon is able to use and it is then up to the player to choose which of these they want to assign. The pool includes every move the Pokemon has previously known, which means you can relearn any attack at any time. There's no item needed or money to be spent, just simply swap moves in and out until you are happy with the four that you've allocated to your Pokemon. This new change is great for a few reasons. Firstly, it makes relearning old moves a breeze. You don't have to worry about trying to locate the random move reminder NPC and paying them money or items to teach your buddy something that they should already know. Secondly, it allows you to easily adapt your Pokemon's moveset before important battles. 
can't choose which coverage move to use in your Pokemon? No worries, swap them in and out depending on the type of Pokemon you expect to be facing. Need to use a certain move to fill the Pokedex entry but you've already replaced it with another? No stress, just swap out and complete that entry. It's a very minor change but being able to learn and remember moves when it suits you without the need of an NPC is such a quality of life improvement. It also takes the unwanted stress of ensuring you've selected the perfect moveset for your Pokemon, which makes playing the game far more enjoyable. We've seen slight improvements to move acquisition over the years with adjustments to TMs and HMs, so surely this new feature will be a mainstay in future titles, right? Well, I certainly hope all of these new features remain in some capacity moving forward, but what do you think? Do you like these new features? And are there any others that I've missed? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. Well that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like before you head off, and if you thought it was particularly useful, why not tell your friends? I post regular videos on the Pokemon and Legend of Zelda series, so subscribe to keep up with future releases. If you want to see bits of my Zelda and Pokemon collection, then follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I also do small skits, weekly trivia and other random shenanigans on there, so check them out if that's your thing. Links will be in the description. But whatever you choose to do next, I hope you stay safe, stay kind, and I'll catch you next time on The Hungry Heracross.